I, 25, F, don't speak to my mother, like at all. I had to go to my mother's house today to pick up an important document that I left behind when I moved out seven years ago. As soon as I got to the house, my mother suddenly had a massive emergency and realized that it was apparently her friend's funeral today, and she completely forgot about it. I couldn't help but internally roll my eyes, as there is always some drama hence why I have gone no very low contact. She asked me if I would watch my two younger brothers, 7 and 11, whilst she went to the funeral, and I said absolutely not, as it's my only day off, I have plans, and I have no relationship with them due to my mother stopping them from seeing me for years. I just wanted to get my birth certificate and leave. My mother asked her friend if she would babysit and asked me to stay for 10 minutes until her friend came. I didn't even get the opportunity to say no before my mother left the house. I was seething but resolved to wait 10 minutes. My mother's friend turned up and started berating me for not agreeing to look after my brothers whilst my mother went to the funeral. I said I don't have anything to do with my mother, it's my day off work, and I'm under no obligation to look after anyone else's children. My mother's friend then told me to go to my room. I laughed in her face and started to leave the house, and she asked me where I was going. And I told her, my room, at my apartment, that I pay for with my big girl job. Because I'm an adult, not a child. And don't ever speak down to me like that again. And I left. My mother has left me loads of messages and missed calls saying I'm an idiot for the way I spoke to her friend. I do admit I look kinda young, but I still am not happy with the way my mother's friend spoke to me. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I actually quite admire your refusal to get drawn in. Not the idiot. The audacity to try and send someone else's adult child to their room. I would have laughed too. I came into this expecting her to be younger than 18, and when I read 25, I laughed for like 5 min. Even if she was under 18, that person had absolutely zero grounds to tell a stranger what the hell to do in a house that wasn't hers. I had a good laugh too. I may be the idiot because my mother's friend didn't know me and may have genuinely thought I was a minor as I do look very young for my age. It really wouldn't matter. You're not the idiot now and you'd have been not the idiot if you had been a minor, she had no business speaking to you that way regardless. The fact that adults can quite often get away with behaving badly towards children because children don't usually have the ability to do what you did here doesn't mean that their behavior is good, it just means they can get away with it. She behaved like an idiot and you spanked her. My boyfriend, 27, and I, 26, have been together for two years. He's a good heart and is normally rational, but his one issue is that he expects to accompany me on every occasion, no matter how big or small. He even went with me to my ex-boyfriend's funeral after days of begging. Now my best friend got married a few days ago, it was very small, and only close family and friends were invited, my boyfriend couldn't come because of the plus one rule. He pitched a hissy fit, saying my best friend has no respect for my relationship, and was shocked when he learned that I was still going to attend. He told me that if he can't go then I'm expected to not go as well, but that is my best friend and I had to respect her rules. He gave me an ultimatum either we go together or I stay home with him. I ended up going cause again I respected my friend's rules. He was angry with me and kept calling the entire two hour drive then stopped. Later I got a text from his friend telling me he, my boyfriend, got into an accident and was taken to the hospital. I freaked out he gave me the address and I had to leave the wedding and told my friends why. I was crying the entire drive home and kept calling his friend but got no response. I arrived at the hospital and asked about my boyfriend and they checked and told me he wasn't there, my anxiety reached 160% as I kept calling his friends one by one. I just went home and there he was along with his friend. He saw me and said that he was sorry but this was the only he can get me home after I left him alone. After the initial shock, I just blew up yelling at him about lying and making me leave my friend's wedding and having me literally go to the hospital and freaking out cause of him. I kicked his friend out and we got into an argument. He kept talking about how much I love him, thus I left which is my own doing not his, and he was just trying to see if I really chose my friend's wedding over him. He then argued that my friend caused this and I shouldn't agree with her to exclude him, I said what he did was horrible and called him horrible and then went to my room. It was awful cause my friends kept calling to check in on him cause they thought he was really at the hospital. He said I overreacted and that I yelled at the wrong person. Am I the idiot? Did I go too far? P.S. 
he has a history of mental health issues but got better in the past few months. He also had a recent death in his family which really affected his health generally. Not the idiot. This is abuse. OP's boyfriend doesn't love her, he loves controlling her. This is absolutely abuse, and the OP hasn't gone far enough yet. Not until she is out of this toxic relationship. Not the idiot. This is called coercive control and is a form of domestic violence. You should leave for sure. Not the idiot, what the hell is wrong with that person? You are absolutely not in the wrong. He made you think he was hurt for God's sake. I try to not be one of those people that say this but run. Fast. This is psychological abuse. My dad died in a work accident when I was 15, and I'm now 17M. Last year my mom started going out with Anthony and they just got engaged. Anthony wanted to move in, but the problem is he's severely allergic to dogs. My mom told me we had to get rid of Dax my dog. Like not even as a question just straight up said that's what we're gonna do. I fought with my mom over this because he is my family and he's what's helped me get through losing my dad. Dax was my dad's dog that he rescued from a shelter when he was still a puppy and we had him since I was 11. So he means a lot to me. But my mom was like nope he has to go. We fought so much about it that I actually cried. Nobody wanted to adopt Dax though, and I had to beg my grandpa from my dad's side to take him, or else my mom was gonna take him to a shelter. The problem was my grandpa lives an hour away, and he can't do much physical stuff like take him out for walks, feed him, take him to the vet, etc. And no one around to help him take care of a dog. My grandpa suggested I could move here with him, since all my classes are on Zoom, and I'm graduating in June anyways. I told my mom I want to move in with my grandpa so I can be with Dax. She got really mad about that, and she says they, her and Anthony, are my family and I need to be with them. But I told her. 1. Anthony's not my family. I have my own problems with him cause he's kept talking about being my new dad, and I don't like that crap, but he doesn't listen when I tell him to stop saying he's my new dad cause he's not. And 2. Dax is my family and she made me get rid of him just like that. My grandpa's my family too anyways. Last week I got my stuff and my uncle helped me move to my grandpa's house. My mom have still been mad. She's not gonna force me to come back, but she's still saying I'm being a really crappy son and that I'm choosing to be with my dog instead of with them. But it hurt too much being without him. He was taken to my grandpa's a week before I left and all that time I was up crying missing him. And I know he missed me too because he lost it when I got there. My mom keeps telling me to come back and stop being cruel to her, but I'm happy here with my dog. I get she's got someone new to be happy with, and that's cool it's her life. But why can't I be happy too with my dog living with me? Does it make me an idiot that I basically did choose Dax over her? You are absolutely not a crappy son. What your mom is doing is horrible. She's trying to force a new family on you without your consent. Stay with your grandpa and keep the dog. Hope things look up for you in the future. I can tell Dax is a good boy. Not the idiot. I see so many stories here about how parents expect their kids to automatically accept their new partners when they remarry. It blows my mind they think it will just happen. Not the idiot. You didn't choose your dog over her. She chose her husband over you and your furry friend. Furry friend was kicked out of the house and you followed him. Not the idiot. Your stepdad and mom are majorly out of line, and to be honest, I'm pretty concerned here that your stepdad is going to turn out to be abusive. I, 22F, grew up in a family where men prank and tease each other. Ever since my fiancé, Tim 23, and I got engaged, my cousin, brother, dad, and uncle joked about running some tests to see what type of man Tim is. They've done stuff like forcing him to play chess four times in a row and secretly slashed his tires to see if he'd fix it himself like a man or get help like those lazy guys. They'd asked him questions like what joke he'd like to tell his future mill, his opinions on abortion, Jesus, gender equality, etc. They also tested his fishing and hunting skills, overwhelming him with hypothetical scenarios to test his decision-making abilities mental strength. They kept calling him slow and soft, but he has a medical condition, asthma, and they think he's making excuses. I demanded they stop, but dad said this is just typical stuff men challenge each other with and said that I was ruining the fun. Last week, they took Tim on a three-day trip and hit his inhaler, he left them and returned in seven hours and told me.
I was seething after he said they admitted to hiding it as a challenge, I exploded on them when they returned. Cousin asked if little Timmy ran to me to tattle. I yelled that all four of them are uninvited to my wedding. My brother freaked out saying it was a prank and they were going to give it back, dad said they'll apologize if I insist, but Tim will have lost the little respect they'd gained for him, and in their eyes will always be the soft college kid who's not up for the challenge. I called him and the others awful then I left. My cousin is begging that we talk, and my uncle has been quiet, but dad is so mad, and now he's getting mom involved to get me to reconsider this decision. But I keep refusing to re-invite them. Mom is saying I'm exaggerating and should let bygones be bygones and not let this ruin my relationship with my family. Am I the idiot for making it my hill to die on or am I exaggerating? Not the idiot. This doesn't sound like pranking but more like bullying. Who slashes tires as a prank? Or messes with someone's health as a prank? Just they just seem like big bullies to me. In my family, we tease each other and play jokes and trust me this is not what we do. Pranking is meant to be harmless fun. None of these are harmless. Not the idiot. They shouldn't come. Their pranks went from wildly inappropriate to outright dangerous. They hit an inhaler from someone with asthma. Not only would I keep them disinvited, but I'd also go no contact completely. Not the idiot for uninviting your dad, cousin, brother, and uncle from your wedding. You're the idiot for making your husband put up with their antics for so long. Your family is not doing pranks they are awful bullies and terrorizing him.